All right, here's our next problem. This one is going to be a little bit different, um, and you'll see why in just a second. First thing I want to do is I want to combine things together that are on each side of the equal sign. Remember, we can't cross things together yet that are on both sides of the equal sign. We have to wait to cancel things out. So let's look at this side first. Uh, put a box around that. Now that's just a regular number, so that would be a circle. Put a circle around that, and there's an X right there. So let's take care of this side first. Um, I can put together the 13X and the minus 3X, which would be 10X. Okay. Um, I can put together the negative 4 and the negative 2 that are regular numbers and just make negative 6. Now, on my other side, equals, these are all just regular numbers, so I can put those together right away. 6 plus 5 plus 3, 11 and 14. Okay. Here's what our problem looks like now after we've combined things together. 10x minus 6 equals 14. Now, some of you guys can prob could probably go through and figure out what x is right now, but I'm, again, I'm going to show you ways to do it here. Remember, our goal is to get the x, or whatever the variable is, by itself on one side of the equal sign. Right now, our biggest problem is we've got this guy clogging it up over here. We've got to somehow get rid of this so we're closer to having the x be by itself. Here's how we do that. We do another set of canceling out. And again, all we're doing is we're working with opposites here. And I think it's pretty easy once you figure out what we're doing. I need to get rid of this because this needs to be by itself on one side of the equal sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the opposite of negative 6 or the opposite of minus 6, which is plus 6. Subtract 6, add 6, those are opposites. If I have opposites, I can cancel them out. Cancel out. Okay. Now the thing is, if I do this to one side, remember you've got to do it to the other side. So if I did plus 6 over here, I've got to do plus 6 over here. So when I do this plus 6, 14 plus 6 is now 20. Okay. Now I'm not quite done yet because over here I still have 10x equals 20. That's a problem because again I still don't have this x by itself on the side. I've got it attached to this times 10 which is not what I want. So we have to do the opposite. The opposite of times 10 would be divided by 10. That's how we could get this to cancel off of here and get it out of here. So I'm going to do divide by 10 on the bottom. Times 10, divide by 10, those are opposites. Okay, there we go. I can cross off something that cancels out and not do anything with it because they cancel out. Now to do the same thing to the other side, which means I need to divide by 10 on the other side. Okay, so then 20 divided by 10, of course, is 2. So I'm left with an answer of x equals 2, and I've accomplished all my goals here. I've got x by itself on a side, which is exactly what we were looking for. So now what I think we'll do is I'm going to go back and check it quick to make sure I'm right, and I'm going to go every time I see an x, I am putting 2 in for it. Okay. So I'll just start, uh, let's see, I don't even know where I can fit this at here, maybe over to the side. 13 times x, 13 times 2 is 26, maybe I'll just put that right there, 26. Uh, I've still got a negative 4, there's no x with that. I've got a negative 2, and then I've got a minus 3 times 2, which is 6, okay, and all that, in order for that to be to work, would have to equal whatever's on this side, which would be 11, 12, 13, 14. So if this equals up to 14, we know we did our job, and we know we did this right, and x does equal 2. So let's see here. Um, 26 is positive, so I've got negative 4, negative 2, negative 6. Well, I know that 24 minus 4 is 22, minus 2 is going to be 20, 
and minus six more is going to be 14. So since that checked out, x does equal two. All right, last one we will do together before you try this on your own here. We've got our two sides of our equal sign here, so we want to put things together that go together to start with here. And I want to keep them separate for now. Um, so here I've got 8 plus 3 times 3 would be 9 plus 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Combine those together, I've got 16 uh, plus 4 would be 20, and then there'd be 5 more left of the 9, which would be 25. So I've basically got 25 equals, and then over here I've got n plus n plus n, n plus n plus n, if we combine those together, would be 3n. And then I still have that plus 7 over there that can't combine with the 3n. So now our problem looks like this. 25 equals 3n plus 7. Remember our goal is we've got to get this by itself on one of the sides of the equal sign. So we've got a couple problems so far. We've got to get rid of this plus 7. At the end, we're going to have to get rid of this times 3, but that always comes last, as you've probably seen. So now we need to get rid of this plus 7. To get rid of this positive 7 right here, the opposite of that would be to subtract 7. Okay. If I do opposites, they will cancel out, and I can just cross them off and forget about it. But you have to remember to do the same thing to the other side. So if I put my minus 7 in there, 25 minus 7 is going to be 18. So now my problem looks like this. 18 equals 3n. Okay? Most people will probably be able to look at this and say, well, that's 6. Okay? 3 times 6 is 18. You're 100% right. But if you can't figure that out, we'll do more canceling out. This 3 is a times 3. 3 times n. So I need to do the opposite of times 3, which is divide 3. Divided by 3, if I do opposites times 3 divide 3, cancel out, that leaves me only with n. Now I need to do the same thing to the other side. Divided by 3, I've got to do the same thing to both sides. 18 divided by 3 is going to be 6. So my answer is n equals 6. Okay. I could always check and make sure I was right. We know that this side over here of the equal sign equals 25, so this side should equal 25. If n equals 6, let's try it here. 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 plus 6 is 18. 18 plus 7 is 25. So we know that n does, in fact, equal 6. Here are the two problems that I would like you to try on your own now, um, just to see how you're doing. I would like you to try these first and pause this, uh, and then kind of see how you come out. Um, if you ha really having troubles, you can definitely watch the video to go along with this, but I want to see if you can figure things out. If you got questions why are you doing this, make sure that you ask for sure, 100% here. Always start with combining the things on either side of the equal sign together that are able to go together. That's always a good start. And then you just have to remember our goal. Our goal is to always get that variable, always get that letter by itself. To do that, you're going to have to do some canceling. This top one, I know you're really only going to have to do one thing to cancel. This bottom thing, you're going to have to do a couple of things. So please keep that in mind when you cancel. If you do something to one side, you have to do it to the other side. Take a stab at these two problems and see how you do. All right, let's take a look at the top one. Okay, combining things together. On this side of the equal sign, looks like I could put the 50 and the 50 together to make 100. Easy enough. Equals. I have x, x, x. All those things are going to be able to go together. So I could box them off, which would be fine. Uh, 2x, negative 3x, negative 9x. 
Um, if I put the negatives together, that would be negative 12. Negative 12 and a positive 2 is going to be negative 10. X. Now I'm in the last phase of solving this problem. If you look at this problem, I'm hoping you can just tell that it's going to be 10. Negative 10, or not 10, excuse me, negative 10 is what it needs to be. Negative 10 times negative 10 would be positive 100. But if you cannot figure that out, all we have to do is our canceling. The opposite of times negative 10, because that's what this is. This reads right here, negative 10 times x, so it's times. The opposite of times negative 10 is to divide by negative 10. Those are opposites times by negative 10, divide by negative 10, those are going to cancel out, leaving us with just x on the side over here. Now I need to divide by negative 10 over here, just like I did over here. I divided by negative 10 to cancel. Have to do it over here. 100 divided by negative 10 is negative 10. So my solution to this is x equals negative 10. And again, I can go back through and see if this works here. 50 and 50 is 100, so we know that whatever this side, if this side's 100, that side has to equal 100, and if it does, I know that my answer is correct. So we can start off by looking at this. 2 times x, 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. We can just call that negative 3 if you want to. Um, negative 3 times negative 10 is going to be a positive 30. And then if I just want to make that negative 9, um, negative 9 times negative 10 is positive 90. Now if I add these together, 90 and 30 is 120. 120 minus 20 is 100. So this one worked out just fine. x equals negative 10. So for the bottom one here, same thing. We've got to combine things together. Uh, not hard to do. 50 and 50, still 100 over here, equals... Now, on this side, it's a little bit different. We have some x's over here. We have some regular numbers over here. Here's a regular number. Here's a regular number. I'm boxing these off with the symbol in front of it. Um, all the rest of them are x's, which I'll put the rectangle around, including the symbol in front of it. So what I'm going to have here is negative 3 plus negative 9 is going to be negative 12. Negative 12 and positive 2 is negative 10 just like it was at the top. So we have negative 10x. But the difference this time is we have those extra numbers on there. We have 13 and 7. Those can go together. 13 and 7 be positive 20 plus 20. So now in order to get this x by itself on this side, there's a couple of things that we're going to have to do here. Uh, the first thing is we need to get rid of this plus 20. We got to get rid of this. Okay, so to get rid of that, again, I'm going to do the opposite. Plus 20, opposite of that is minus 20. Cancel out. Have to do the same thing to the other side. Minus 20, 80. So now I'm left with 80 equals negative 10x. Now I'm looking at this, and I know that my answer, that's an x, I know that my answer is going to be negative 8, because negative 10 times negative 8 is going to be positive 80. But if you don't know that, again, we're just going to do the opposites to cancel. The opposite of a negative 10 times negative 10 is what this is. We can divide by negative 10, which is going to cancel it out. Remember, I have to do the same thing to the other side. This is a negative sign. And it's just part of my board. I need to get a new board here. Um, if I divide the other side by negative 10, 80 divided by negative 10 uh, is, of course, negative 8. So my answer is x equals negative 8. And again, I can go through the whole process again. Um, and if I did that, I know that this side equals 100, so my other side would also have to equal 100. If I put negative 8 in for all the x's, this side would also equal 100. 